Hi everyone, so today we're going to be talking about how to write the perfect macroeconomics IE. Now students probably struggle with this one the most um, and I think the reason for that is that um, the international IE is usually on something very specific like a tariff on a specific good. Equally the microeconomics IE is also on like a Pagovian tax or on uh, some other measure to cure an externality, which is something very specific, and it's much easier to evaluate. Whereas with um, the macroeconomics, i.e. often you are um, taking into account so many different factors, and often the policies themselves have very broad implications. So I think students struggle a lot with evaluating uh, the policies and explaining them effectively. Um, so today I'll give you a few hints and tips about how to write a very effective IA. Um, so first of all, the key to the whole thing, as with the other IAs, is to find a really good article. This, um, this will do half of the work for you, essentially. If you find a good article, it will be much easier to write the commentary. Um, so keep that in mind when you do look for articles, don't just look for what's interesting or what's short or what's easy. Look for something that you can really get your teeth into in terms of evaluation and analysis. Um, so what I want you to do with this is if you go on to Google, I'll just go in here, and then you search for um, the policy you want to focus on. So you can focus on um, monetary policy, which is interest rates, or you can focus on fiscal policy, um, which can be a whole broad range of different types of um, fiscal stimulus. Um, fairly easy to do. I'll just quickly go on to Google Chrome here. So I've already typed in, I've searched for monetary policy in the UK. Um, and here's what I've got, just a whole bunch of different articles. Uh, the first one from the Financial Times, only published 22 hours ago. So we'll have a quick look at that. So UK business activity drops to the lowest level on record. Uh, economic downturn could be worse than anything in living memory. Um, so there's probably going to be lots of good information about the problems faced in the economy right now caused by the coronavirus. Now, what I'm looking out for here is different data points. So we've got lots and lots of different, just scan reading here, we've got uh, all these different indicators of um, businesses and manufacturing and service is activities. Um, over the last couple of months. So if you want to choose an article like this, then that's absolutely fine. They're really going into detail about some of the problems um, faced by the UK economy. And uh, in the last part, I think they talk about um, monetary policy and how that can be used to try and alleviate some of the problems caused by the lockdown um, and the coronavirus. Um, so fairly, lots and lots of interesting uh, articles on this. Um, if you just look up interest rates and a particular choice, I'm sure most countries will be engaging in expansionary monetary policy um, at the moment. Um, so anyway, um, so really easy, just go into Google News, do a quick search, um, and then try and find an article. I would probably shy away from uh, supply side policies. Um, the only reason for that is because they're so broad and it's fairly difficult to um, find a really decent article. But I did have a few students a couple of years ago write one on the bridge from Scotland to Ireland as a supply side policy, um, equally high speed trains in different countries, like the, the development of a new bullet train in Japan and China. That was also uh, a student used those examples that are a very effective um, topic for an IA. Um, so if you want to go into that direction, that's absolutely fine, uh, but we'll just keep it nice and easy for um, this example. Um, so again, I'll just reiterate this. So to make your um, life easy, make sure that your article describes a problem 
and a solution to the problem. Okay, and that will set you up nicely for writing the essay. So, moving on. So once we found the article, please send it to me. Um, we are ready to write the macroeconomics IA. Um, so I've given you a quick rundown of what's expected in each paragraph here. Um, please take a picture of the screen or make notes. Um, this will be very helpful for you when you come to write it. So in paragraph one, um, what you've got to do is you've got to say what the article is about, introduce the article, what are the key economic problems described in the economic uh, in the article, and what are some key definitions that you would like to get out of the way in the first paragraph. Okay, then you'll move on to uh, drawing the problem as a diagram, and then explain the diagram in as much detail as possible okay um then you'll go on to say what was the proposed solution in the article draw the diagram of this solution and how that will affect the problem discussed in paragraph two and the first diagram and then once again you'll be explaining how the solution fixes the problem on the diagram Okay, so then after that, I would like you to then evaluate the solution or the policy. Um, key point here is don't make a list. Now, I see so many students this year and last year basically just copy what's in the nutshell guidebook and just a number of uh, bullet points. This is a absolute common pitfall. So please stick to the article and try and make relevant key arguments using the article or data in the argument uh, in the article and uh, then you can't go wrong what i don't want to see is a list of generic points for and points against i don't want to see one huge paragraph with uh 10 sentences listing the points for monetary policy and then another huge paragraph with points against so what's better is if you've got quality arguments backed up by evidence in the article okay and then finally once you've um, analyzed the policy and you've evaluated it with some really good arguments in the final paragraph are there any overall conclusions you can make um, about this policy would it be better that the, the policy is used in conjunction with other policies or would another policy be more effective in the long run or the short run okay um, remember when you're evaluating again you've got to keep in mind the um, implications for the long run short run and how the policy will affect different stakeholders in the economy um, and we'll go into that in a little bit. So the common pitfalls for this IA are basically these two here. Inaccurate diagrams, you'd be surprised how many diagrams are inaccurate. Make sure you use the textbook or um, what you've got in one note. Go on to draw IO, make an accurate diagram. And if you can put the figures in that are used in the article, even better um, the IB love when you apply um, data to the um, diagrams and theory um, it's a really good skill to um, to hone and I think uh, the, the the examiners will look very favorably on it so if there's a um, if they give you uh, the change in interest rates and the exact number use that on a diagram use the data showing a decrease in gdp um and then you'll get higher marks the other thing as i touched on before again oh sorry with the diagrams always make sure there's good labels as well so many students just give a generic diagram one aggregate demand what you've got to do is you've got to um give a detailed title and apply the diagram as much as possible to the country and scenario. Do not make it generic. Do not just copy the textbook um, because you'll lose marks uh, for analysis here. 
Um, and the other common pitfall, as I mentioned before, is about evaluation. It's very, very difficult to get full marks on evaluation. Um, so what you have to do here is to absolutely make sure that you go through the article with a fine tooth comb and make sure that you can analyze and evaluate um, arguments for and against and of course apply them to the specific scenario of that country. Um, okay, so um, in, in a way with all this, with, with the coronavirus um, going on right now, there's no shortage of articles coming out about monetary policy and fiscal responses to the to COVID-19. Um, obviously, COVID-19 is leading to a massive um, decrease in aggregate demand. Consumer spendings went down, investment spendings went down, um, and also exports, of course, would have went down as well. Um, and the implications of, of such I mean, are still ongoing. So there's lots and lots of articles about that and the government and central banks response to this um, problem. So if you want to find something on uh, that, then that is absolutely fine. Um, the only problem is it's an ongoing situation, so there may not be clear um, outcomes within the article as we don't know the effect of uh, the monetary policy and fiscal policy on um, aggregate demand currently. Uh, but it is worthwhile having a look at some articles related to that. Okay, so um, I've put in an example here. Um, this was done last year about China. Um, China flirts with easier monetary policy and makes slowing growth. So again, really, you can tell by you can usually tell by the headline whether or not it's going to be a decent uh, article. It's from Bloomberg, so that's a, that's an all right um, source as well. And it was written within one year of uh, writing the um, commentary. Um, so the article is fairly good. I'm not going to read through it, but you can look it up if you wish. Um, so there's lots of detail here about um, GDP, um, weaker output, and all of the different factors affecting um, the Chinese economy. And then um, they're talking about the solution, which appears to be lowering interest rates and stimulating the economy through um expansionary monetary policy okay so lots of stuff here lots of good stuff um and then there's stuff about the um the currency as well which is part of um, international economics but it's perfectly fine to uh, bring in here as an effect on aggregate demand so we'll have a wee look at what this student has written Okay, so monetary policy in China. So the first paragraph, the Chinese economy has experienced strong economic growth since the 1990s. Growth rates ranged from 7 to 12% per annum. Again, that was taken from the article. In the article, however, it states that Beijing is attempting to avert a slowdown in economic growth with a new round of stimulus, which in this case is expansionary monetary policy. So that's a really good introduction to the IAU. The person has clearly explained what the article is about and also what this commentary will be looking at. Um, so next we'll have a wee look at the next paragraph. The slowdown in Chinese economic growth has been partly caused by dampened domestic demand, good, and uncertainty due to a trade war with the USA as investment plans have slowed and saving rates have increased with a corresponding decrease in spending. Now this is getting into the effect on aggregate demand. So this has affected China's economic growth as the expansion of production potential of an economy. GDP can be calculated using the aggregate demand equation C plus I plus G plus X minus M representing the total expenditure of every stakeholder in the economy. And that's quite a good explanation of aggregate demand um, and a few good definitions there. So by all means, do something like this. I mean, everyone's will be different. 
some people go straight into defining uh, monetary policy and expansionary monetary policy, inflation rates, all of these kind of things. All of that is relevant depending on your article. So the next one, a key indication of slowing growth has been the declining in levels of credit available in China's economy, um, shown as a percentage of GDP or aggregate demand. Now, this was talked about in the article above. Credit levels of China have been declined and we're at a three year low in June. So that means that businesses and consumers are not taking out as many loans as before. Now this could be due to consumer and falls into consumer and business confidence. Um, therefore, the Chinese central bank has implemented expansion of policy to stimulate economic growth. Okay, now, now we go into the explanation of expansion of monetary policy. Expansion monetary policy means increasing the money supply in the economy to lower interest rates, essentially the cost of money to achieve macroeconomic objectives, one of which being economic growth. To increase economic growth, the People's Bank of China used their system of medium term lending funds, permitting the bank to inject liquidity into China's banking system and allowing them to manipulate the interest rates for loans. For expansionary monetary policy, the banks increase their money supply to reduce interest rates and increase demand for loans to encourage investment. Now, this is a really good paragraph because she's brought in um, different concepts from the article and she's applied um, economic theory to the issue described in the article. Next, we'll have a wee look at the diagram. This is a wonderful diagram, colourful, clear, all the... Um, labels are correct. Um, I would say maybe as um, an evaluation point, perhaps if she had the interest rates, the actual interest rates on here um, would be good. So instead of IRE, IR1, she could put, uh, put uh, um, 1% to 0.75% or something like that. Um, the, the title below the diagram, very good again. And she's shown how both diagrams are interacting with one another. Um, okay, so as the money supply shifts from SM1 to SM2, it causes interest rates to decrease from IRE to IR1, leading to the demand for money to expand from QE to Q1. Subsequently, in the little firms market, as the cost of borrowing is cheaper, the quantity of demand for loans expands from Q1. To Q2. Um, good, very short um, explanation of the diagram. And I think this is because um, the student has included a number of diagrams. Now remember, the, we're looking for two diagrams. Um, many students, despite what I recommend, um, include many diagrams. Often there's an opportunity cost issue here. If you include more diagrams, you've got to explain them more going to explain them more, you're going to lose out in the evaluation section. So bear that in mind. So but anyway, good start. She's explained the theory, used diagrams to explain uh, expansionary monetary policy. All good so far. So um, here's the, the effect of this fallen um, interest rates on agri-demand. The, the students uh, shown an increase in GDP and an increase in average price level. Great diagram, perfect. Um, the only thing I would say is that she should probably change the title of the diagram to something more country specific. So use um, the effect on China's aggregate demand of lower interest rates. Again, that just shows that you're applying the model to the, um, to the article once again. Okay, lower interest rates stimulate aggregate demand in the economy shown in figure two as it's cheaper for consumers and investors to borrow and less attractive to save. Good theoretical point, basic uh, monetary policy. Aggregate demand shifts from uh, AD to AD2, leading to an increase in real GDP from Y1 to Y2. Again, make sure you don't leave the diagram hanging. Uh, show the shift on the axis as, you, as the student's done here. This creates a demand pull inflationary gap as um, average price level rises from PL1 to PL2. Um, again, maybe I would fix this by saying 
uh, that it corrects the recessionary gap or increases GDP or increases price levels, perhaps uh, saying it creates a demand pool inflationary gap is, uh, yeah, probably not relevant in this case. So aggregate demand increases when interest rates decrease as it affects components of aggregate demand. Uh, I'm not sure what that sentence means there, so you could maybe explain that a little bit better. For consumers, it leads to a decrease in interest rates on mortgage and other loans. Consequently, they have more disposable income. Good. Um, for investors and businesses, the People's Bank of China is trying to encourage investments by giving banks double the amount of loans. For investing in corporate bonds rated below uh, AA+, um, which is sort of slightly riskier um, bonds. For the government, lower interest rates means it's cheaper to borrow and therefore they'll be able to spend more, increasing aggregate demand through fiscal policy. Um, yep, all good here. I think uh, she, they could have looked a bit more into the effect on consumers. Um, if you're looking at the UK, many consumers here are on variable rate mortgages, decreasing interest rates. Are really going to help them out uh, because they will have less loan repayments per month. It will also make it much more attractive for consumers to buy big or ticket items. Therefore, it's going to increase um, C as a part of aggregate demand. Uh, equally with businesses, um, it will increase business confidence because for the same reasons, they're able to expand for cheaper and there um, there's less opportunity costs um, in terms of debt repayments. Okay, so um, what the student's done here now is quite interesting. It's something we haven't looked at fully yet. Um, lower interest rates will usually lead to a depreciation of the currency, causing capital to flow out of that currency. Now, what she's talking about is hot money here. Um, so the money will move away from investing in uh, the Chinese um, financial institutions as the interest rates fall. Demonstrated in China as the yuan is the weakest Asian currency against the dollar, falling 0.6%. Uh, Lower currency rates will encourage exports and domestic demand will increase, both, uh, both contributing to increased economic growth. That's a really good point. So uh, changing the interest rate will affect the currency. And because um, China is a very much an export-led economy, then um, having a weaker currency will lead to an uh, increase in demand for Chinese goods. Nevertheless, expansionary policy, monetary policy has its weaknesses. Now, this is where the student is starting to go into the, um, the evaluation points related to monetary policy. Uh, Usually, the central bank is independent of uh, the government, but in China, the state um, has the majority control of the banks. This is a really good um, evaluation point, as in the West and most uh, developed ec economies, um, banks tend to be um, independent of government. Um, quite an interesting point. We'll see where we go with this. Um, decisions made about changing interest rates may not be independent of political constraints. In other words, the Chinese government may use uh, interest rates to um, achieve government objectives rather than uh, purely economic objectives. Um, again, referring to the article, monetary policy is a blunt instrument as the government has limited control over where the additional liquidity is allocated within the economy. This may result in an uneven allocation of funding and a liquidity trap if the interest rates are too low. Now, there's a lot of things covered there. Um, I would have preferred it if the student um, expanded on one of them uh, that was most relevant. For example, this liquidity trap issue of if you lower interest rates too much, they no longer have an effect on aggregate demands. And they could have let, led that into um, things like the multiplier effect or the marginal propensity to consume and save. Okay, so um, ultimately monetary policy can be effective to an extent, as even if more growth is needed, interest rates cannot fall below zero. Fair enough, expansion monetary policy may be ineffective due to consumer uncertainty that has arisen due to the trade war with the US. Good, it's uh, referred to the article there. Therefore, decreasing interest rates may not 
uh, increased aggravance due to the consumer's increased marginal propensity to save. Again, that's referred to in the article, meaning consumers are saving more while spending and investing less. Another policy which could be implemented, which may be more effective, is expansionary fiscal policy, as government spending has a direct impact on aggregate demand um, in the necessary sector of the economy. Again, I think this because of word constraints here. The student is not uh, going into these arguments in depth. Um, it seems very much like a kind of list of points rather than a very specific argument against monetary policy. Um, so bear in mind, although this IA is excellent, it's a very good IA, and um, it's just around the word count, they aren't evaluating effectively here. Um, there just seems to be a list of different points, and none of them are expanded on fully, and this is due to the word count constraints. Um, so, yeah. Okay, and, and finally, the last sentence. Additionally, the expansionary policy can affect the potential output, which leads to economic growth. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's quite good for uh, summing up here. Um, so, although this is good, great, I mean, I, th I would say the key strength of this was the explanation and application of the theory. However, they have came down on the um, evaluation points. Um, so that's that. So just to wrap up, um, I'll go back to the beginning again. Yeah, so what to do with uh, the macro IA? First, find a really good article, right? Don't go overboard with the diagrams and don't make generic uh, point-based uh, evaluation um, and you should be fine. Go into depth, use the article as much as possible and you will do well. Um, I hope this uh, has helped somewhat with the uh, IA because it's a tricky one. The um, macroeconomics ID IA is fairly tricky. Um, so if you've got any questions at all, please message me on Teams, uh, email me, and uh, then we'll talk about this uh, in our next lesson. Okay, thanks very much. Goodbye.